history because that's something hard to do. It, it's uh, you know it's not a tangible thing obviously when you have actors who did not spend their upbringing together. So how did you kind of uh, form that bond and, and have that relate like cultivate that relationship if you will? I mean it came pretty easily. I mean I met Alex at the screen test and uh, about around the same time I met Betsy. And I mean, we, I, at first I didn't really like, you know, we didn't get to spend much time together because I was in LA back in what, like 2019, so long ago. And then, um, yeah, after a while, I mean, we, we met again and then we just started kind of hanging out on set and off and it was very quick, like very, very quickly we developed a relationship off set and I think that that definitely translates on screen. Um, I think there's a lot of chemistry there and I think to some degree we feel like brothers in real life. So I think that, I don't know, I think that really, shines through and I think that it, it brings something to the screen. I think that can always bring something to the screen regardless of the relationship. Um, you know, if there's something off screen, even if it is different uh, than, than what is presented on screen, I think that it still sort of shines through, so. Yeah, I would have to echo that. And also I think COVID had a big part as well. I mean, I think the miraculous thing is that, is how well we get along uh, and how different our upbringings was. I, I came from New York, he came from Texas. Uh, so it's just two different places to begin with. But uh, that's the interesting thing about COVID, isn't it? It's the people that are nearby you, you become very close with. And the people that used to be close to you and now are farther from you can start to drift away. So um, I, I honestly thought that there was a silver lining to the whole being up here. You know, we shoot up here. Uh, and having to spend that time together is that we bonded in real life and it showed on screen. Wow, we're like two minutes in. We're getting so deep already. <laughs> well said, John. <Jeff. laughs> a lot of these guys. It's great. Yeah. And Ian, uh, reuniting with Tyler, because obviously people know you from Teen Wolf. He's also in Yellowstone, by the way. Let's give it up for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like kind of reuniting with Tyler for this show? Um, I, I had a great, my experience with this uh, is, is special because I got to see the show before I had met anyone but Tyler. So I, I became a fan. And normally when you work on something, you're there before, you, you know how the sausage is made and you never get to see it as an audience member. So I got to watch it and I binged it and I was so impressed that when I got there, I just couldn't wait to, to meet everybody and be like, oh my God, you're, you're you, you know, you're, you're Lois and you're the boys. And, and so that was a, a wonderful new experience for me. Um, Tyler and I spent a lot of time together running around, so it's great to, to link up and work together again. We just kind of laugh and, and joke like we did uh, on Teen Wolf uh, every day. And so it's a, it's a blessing. And then I've got a whole new family of friends that I'm incredibly happy and joy, joyful to be uh, to know and to work with. So it's, it's been really good for me. Oh, that's awesome. OK, uh, everyone has a chance to ask a question. We just ask that you try to keep it to one question per person. So if you do have a question, I'm sure you do, for the cast of Superman and Lois, you can just line up in an orderly fashion uh, to one of the two mics there in the aisles. And uh, we do ask that you keep the masks on for COVID safety protocols and everything like that. Uh, you just probably want to speak up a little bit more than usual and make sure you're really uh, crowding that mic. Before we get to the questions, I need to say, Bitsy, huge fan of Grimm. Love that show. Thank you so much. Yeah. And Tyler, I don't know if there's any Richard Linklater fans here, but everybody wants some. That to me was like a star turn for you. I mean, that was an incredible, fun, and also deep film, and you just carried it so well. So thank, thank you for that you performance. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we get to questions, uh, let's. I want to ask Alex something. Uh, the powers are starting to emerge. How yeah. much fun is that to, to, to play a character who's going through this kind of transition like that? That must be so exciting as a performer. Oh my god, it's a blast. Uh, I, I mean, first of all, I mean, even just from when I was a little kid, my whole dream was to be on television and to kind of carry a character throughout years in real time. So the fact that this character has that upbringing and that progression, it, it was just a dream come true from the very start. I mean, and the power stuff is so cool. I mean, um, you know, for, for the limited amount that I've done that has aired, um, uh, it, it was interesting trying to find that. Uh, I mean, I remember my first question I asked Tyler on like one of the first days was how do you do the laser eyes because that comes quickly in the pilot and I remember one of the things he said was like the more ridiculous you look doing it the better it will look and I have taken that to heart so uh, I, I have to say uh, my fake dad really did teach me how to do laser eyes it was great <laughs> <laughs> there's the quote of the day all right let's take some questions we'll start on this side go ahead hi uh, question is for Tyler are, are you ever gonna be Superman in a any other movie? 
Uh, that's a decision for like a whole bunch of people that are not me to make. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I have no idea. There's so many things going on with you know the DC and Marvel universes and how they're kind of intermixing the TV and film side of things now. So I have no idea. I've not been given any kind of schedule that looks like a movie yet. So uh, as of now, I'm just working on this. But uh, who, I mean, who knows? I guess it's anybody's guess. Thank you. All right, over here. Go ahead. This is for Jordan and Alex. I want to know what's your what's been your favorite action sequence to film so far. Oh uh, yeah, I, I am on the film. I really is liked. It, is it aired uh, already? Is it aired already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I was racking my brain for. Yeah. Like season, season, one. season one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, can't, I feel like I can't even sp like speak on season two because I'm like nervous. They're like, oh, I don't want to spoil. But no, I mean, I think. Uh, both seasons. I mean, I'd say season one, there was some stuff we did very early on and during the, the Schuster mine sequence with when he first uses his laser eyes and the explosion with the fire. That was so much fun because that was the first like big stunt sequence we did, right? So it was like so many stunt performers and they were all on wires and they were getting yanked back. Like they did the sequence where like five people at once, he blows up the fire and they all just go flying, right? So it was like watching that actually unfold was kind of crazy and it's unlike anything I've ever seen and they actually made the fire blow up. Uh, they, I'm sure they added quite a bit in, in post with CGI but like it was it was pretty it was pretty legit. Shout out to Lee Tolan Krieger the one and only Lee Tolan Krieger. Lee, Lee Tolan. He was uh, the director of the first two episodes. He set a lot of the tone for it. Genius. Uh, oh I, I was gonna say uh, not to spoil anything uh, but in the finale of season one uh, there was a sequence in which Due to strange circumstances, uh, we were both flying, um, and that's what I was going to say. In the barn. In the barn, yeah, right? So, okay, can you imagine a barn like as big as this, right? I mean, and the then, ceiling was like, literally like, that the ceiling tall. was like yeah. taller than this, right? And then they set up racks, and then they had both of us like in, in things flying up into the air. I was like choking him, and I was going like this, and we were both like like twenty feet in the air. Choking each other out. I've never felt more satisfied in my life. <laughs> well said. All right, thank you so much for the question. Uh, we'll take as, one over here. As, as you can see, it's very difficult to get max effort out of these guys. Yeah, totally. Right. Could you put some into it, please? <laughs> Go ahead. This one is for Bitsy. Going back to Grim, one of my favorite things about it is the reactions of the cast. Like, that's one of the things that draws me into it, and you don't see You mean like when we vote, like morphed? No, more like your reactions to the story that's being told, it felt very genuine, and I feel like a lot of television doesn't necessarily showcase the reactions. Um, so I was wondering if for you guys as actors, if there were any specific um, inspirations that you drew from to develop that. Uh, specifically on Grimm? Uh, it's the first one that comes to mind. Um, I, I don't know that there was, I, I think that show, because it was sort of a supernatural and it was a fantasy, we had a lot of leeway to create the characters ourselves and go with it. Uh, the only person for whom the role was sort of written was Silas. Uh, we are Mitchell, who played Monroe because he had worked with the creators of Grimm before. Um, this this is obviously a little bit different because I'm playing Lois Lane. So I, as much as I have made the character my own, I also had to stay true to the canon and the icon. Um, but uh, yeah, we ha we probably had a little bit more freedom to just do whatever we wanted, and obviously with some guidance from the showrunners on Grimm, um, because it was. You know, it, it, I know it was based on the Grim fairy tales, but the characters, you know, the series regulars were all inventions. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, we'll take one over here. Hi. I'm, I'm a little nervous. I love all of you guys. I've watched Teen Wolf and Grim for years. You look great. Thank you. Um, like, so similar, my question's about Grim. It's like my favorite show of all time. Thank you. Well, Juliet. Um, what was it like going from playing Juliet on Grimm and working with your husband to working on um, Lois, and, uh, Lois and on Supergirl? It was funny, you know, David and I were uh, didn't start dating. This is a question I get asked a lot. When did you guys start dating? It was like towards the end of season three. 
Um, and it was difficult because when the NBC executives found out, because it was a female and male lead, they were like, kind of like, I don't know if this is a good idea, you know, if this crashes and burns, which they usually do. Um, but uh, it was, we were very professional, and there was one time uh, that we got into a fight on set, and basically we just went into like opposite corners of the room and like turned our backs to each other. <laughs> um, but uh, it was fun. I, I, I will say I've, you know, no offense to the cast of Grimm, all of whom I love. Brie, Brie Turner's flying, one of my best friends. She's flying up to to hang out with me next weekend. I have never had more fun than I with anyone than I do with Tyler. <laughs> it is yeah. non-stop. Giggles, we, it's just a blast, and I'm so lucky, and we were just saying this, truly, like, this week, this week we were saying, like, we're, we're so grateful, we never met, we didn't chemistry read together, we just were cast, and I remember the first day I was shooting Elseworlds, I was like, please let this guy not be, like, some douchebag, uh, uh, and he was, <laughs> he was so great, and we had so much fun, and then, we, I was also saying to Alex and Jordan, because they are besties, we're like, guys, this, don't take this for granted, because we know a lot of casts who don't get along, and we love spending time together. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a wonderful experience. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. I love all of you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Thank so you. much. I just want to pose a question to Ian, uh, because you know we're dealing with a superhero show, everybody's got these kind of larger than life backstories and powers and things like that, but you bring a little bit of balance to it, uh, and, and there's always you know, the, the need for your type of character in these shows, so wh where do you see yourself fitting into the whole pastiche, if you will, of the cast and these characters in the show? I think pretty simply, you know, there's so much conflict that has to be uh, within the genre, and so I provide an obstacle or uh, a board to, to bounce things off that is that goes away from the traditional, um, you know, the goodness of it. I'm I'm a problem, and I think as the series, uh, the season goes on, you'll see more that conflict intensifying. Um, but it's not just black and white. There's degrees of, you know, righteousness involved with it. Um, and then it starts to blur between who's, is something being done for good or for bad, or how does it really work out? But it's just a fulcrum for more conflict, which makes it, I think, more interesting. So that's that's how I see it, and I'm trying to figure out a way to do that properly. I love that, because, you know, you, on the surface, the character could be like a, like a real kind of staple uh, protagonist, or antagonist, and then, but, but giving it those murky motivations, I think, helps deepen the character and, and take it in some interesting directions. Yeah, I, just, I don't want him to be just a dick. Right, exactly, not a one-dimensional thing. All right, we'll take a question over here. Go ahead. Hi, guys. It's so nice to see you all. I love the show. Um, Alex, I was going to say, uh, I watch you your lives. I know you sing and play the piano. I was wondering if we'll ever see a musical episode and how it up. <laughs> Nice. Uh, if there's a musical episode, it'll be starring Alex Garfin and only Alex Garfin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was about to say, uh, uh, I'd ask Tyler uh, to do that. Uh, no, um, no, man. I, I, that, that's that's a question a little bit about my pay grade uh, for now. Uh, it was certainly fun doing that stuff in episode eight, though, with Indy. Yeah. Um, again, quick shout out to her. She's great talent as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I'd love to see like everyone singing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if you would. You, you won't feel that way after you do, I promise. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, we'll take one from over here. Could someone just um, uh, just help uh, bring the mic down there? Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Mark. Thanks a lot. Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Uh, yeah, my question's from Tyler. Um, what was it like working with uh, Richard Linklater and everybody wants him? Uh, yeah. man, it was such a it's such a unique experience. Um, I hadn't had a rehearsal process like that since like Road to Perdition, where we actually have like weeks and weeks of time to go through the script over and over again. Um, he's such a he's such a brilliant guy at casting. Um, he got you know uh, Zoe Deutsch and the twelve of us guys, yeah. and and we all went out to his property in Texas, and we spent three weeks there rehearsing. Um, and I think that is. A huge part of his genius is in casting and rehearsal. Um, we all got to know each other so well, and um, you know everybody kind of got to. Our characters became uh, a weird combination of who they were on the page, and then who we all were like realizing they needed to be given the dynamics of the group. 
Um, so it was really kind of like, it was very fluid and it kind of changed a lot. So from the first draft of the script to what we shot, the, the structure was all pretty much the same, but so much of it had changed just because even for my character, I didn't fully realize who he was until I saw what this other guy was doing. And I was like, oh, he's doing that. Okay, so then I actually need to be more of this. And so it was just for him to allow that process to happen and to give the space for that to happen. Um, it was one of the most collaborative experiences I've ever had. Uh, I know, you know, if someday down the road I, I do end up directing or something like that, that is something I will absolutely take from him, which is, you know, trusting the cast so much to become these characters and really giving the, the script the freedom to change to just become a better script. You know, you can write it and you can have an idea, but when you bring people to it, their unique take is always going to make it a little bit different. So if you allow the flexibility for that to take to take place, it it's, it really, really does what his movies do. Yeah, he's one of my favorite directors. He's, he's amazing, man. Yeah. I can't, can't say enough great things about him. would love to work with him again, so. Yeah, yeah Thanks, for, man. for anyone uh, who hasn't seen that film, everybody wants some. If you love eighties and the baseball and baseball, and check it out. Mustaches and <laughs> cut off shirts on yeah. the guys, you know, it's all exactly. It's all there. It's all there. Okay, go ahead over here. Yeah. Hey guys, I love the show. It's uh, it was a really beautiful surprise to see such a show that's uh, just so different and stands on its own. Um, it, it, from the rest of the CW shows, the superhero shows that came before it. Um, it, so much so that I was kind of confused where is it still the same universe or not because it's it's so different than everything else that came before it but it's the same actors so it was kind of a bit of a confusing uh, start but the fact that we saw Diggle in one of the episodes um, I honestly thought you guys were going like totally reboot like separate just the same actors but then we saw Diggle so are we still in the same kind of universe? Like, can we expect like Melissa Benoist to return as Supergirl or John Cryder to return as Lex Luthor? Are they still existing in this universe, or is it just kind of like pick and choose who we want to kind of continue with the characters that were previously established? I would say there's so many different layers to that, especially for us last year having COVID. There was no chance for like I know there were ideas of doing crossovers and they just got scrapped right away I mean even keeping like your own production up and running was so difficult that there was that that just got completely squashed So for us at least for me the way I've approached it from the beginning um, Again, these are all conversations that go on between all kinds of people back in LA and everywhere else for us We kind of just take care of what we're taking care of day to day for me knowing what you know, Bitsy and I had done in the previous shows and how, you know, we had our infant child coming into this world of having the two teenagers. I just had to make sense in my mind how we got there. And for me, it was a clean slate. So, because otherwise, you know, I would have been asking questions. What happened to our infant child? What happened? So for me, just to clarify it and make it easier for me to get into what we were doing, I just cut it and just started over. So whatever that ends up being, that's the thing with TV too. There's, it's, with film, you know where you start, you know where you finish. Uh, with TV, it's constantly evolving. So it might be one thing today and it might be something completely different tomorrow or next week or a year from now. So to say anything definitively, I know it's always annoying, we don't do it, but it, it, wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be doing justice to it also because we don't know. You know, so it's never it's never like a final answer until until the show's over, and then you get reboots. Hey, so <laughs> hey yo, it never ends. It never ends. So for us right now, just at least the way I'm approaching it is that for me, the only memory I have is as this Clark is that this has been my life with these guys, and that's just how I'm approaching it. So who knows? Time time will tell with the rest, I guess. Well, whatever you guys are doing, it's working. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Play your Clark and your Lois is even different than how you played before. It's just yeah. so it's so much deeper, so much richer. The family dynamic that you guys are having, amazing. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Really appreciate it. I like it. your I'm shirt. Enjoy it. Big fan. Yeah. He loved it. Great question. Thank That's you so much. Neat. Okay, go ahead over here. Um, what was it like working with the other CW cast, like in Elseworlds and Crisis? I mean, it was so fun. Uh, I, I kind of got thrown into it. And I hadn't seen the shows, and it was just like, you know, in Elseworlds, it was the two of us, and Grant, and Steven, and Melissa, and it, uh, for, from my point of view, because I was just there for a couple episodes for Elseworlds, everybody was just kind of having a blast and hanging out. Um, it felt like camp, like summer camp, honestly. What do you think? Yeah. 
<laughs> no, it's, I mean, honestly, one of the greatest parts about that is uh, those crossovers. It's such a big world, and there's so many people. Um, and to see everybody coming off of their shows, onto other shows and everything, uh, it really did feel like camp. It just felt like everybody was kind of hanging out. And, uh, you know, the one nice thing about those situations is you have 15 superheroes in a room, well, you only have so much time in the scenes. Like, everybody has one line. So it's like, it's not like anyone's sitting there going like, man, I've got three pages of dialogue today. I gotta go over all this stuff. It's like, everybody has one thing. It's like, okay, just don't miss my one line. And then we all just hang out all day. So it was kind of like a Sweet. lot of work for the crew and, and it's a lot of time. And, and especially for, you know, Melissa and Grant and Steven and like a lot of people that were running around to all of them all the time. It was a lot of work, but you know, for us, especially on Crisis, it was kind of like, oh, that was, that was cool. Was kind of hanging out. <laughs> it, was, it was great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, I uh, love the show, guys. Real appointment TV viewing for me. Uh, question for all the actors. What version of Superman were you most familiar with before you got this role? Oh, that's a good one. Most memorable? Most, most familiar with. were you familiar with? Um, I'd seen like two episodes of the Terry Hatcher, Dean Kane, Lois and Clark, but that's it. And that's, that's where I'm staying until this show is over, and then I will binge all of it. But until then, that's, that's all I got. <laughs> I... Two, uh, I have, have only to this day seen uh, the Donner films, uh, one and two, and that was it. And um, I chose to avoid any other iterations just because I didn't want it to sort of unduly influence my my choices in this role. Interesting. Yeah. For me, it was Smallville. I'd seen uh, Tom Welling, who's actually here. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. He's, he's great. Uh, I just met him, and it was like, he just like walked up on me earlier, and it was just a dream come true. Like, my boy, we just walked up, and I'm like, what? what? It's like, hey, I'm Tom. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I really liked, I, I binged all 10 seasons uh, several times when I was younger, long before I booked the show, and so when I booked the show, it was definitely, there's a lot of, lot of nostalgia there, so it's great. Uh, you know what, I, I saw the Donner film with this guy, and also the, the woman who plays Sarah Hindi, because... The, the first director, Lee, uh, was talking about it a lot. And we like started shooting and everyone was still talking about Richard Donner, blah, blah, blah. I hadn't seen anything, because uh, I was kind of going Tyler's route. And then we all panicked. So we, we all like panically rushed. Uh, shout out to my mom as well, because she, she was there too. And my real brother. We all panically went over to my house and watched the whole thing. Uh, big fan though, big fan after that. That was, that was fun. <laughs> I didn't realize there were any other Superman shows before this one. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> um, I haven't watched any television iteration of Superman ever until this one, that's true. I'm slightly, I might be, I might be the oldest person on this stage, just by a couple of years. And so for me, it was um, Christopher Reeve uh, in the originals. Yeah. That's, that's how I know him. And, and everything in between is just kind of a, a bit of a blur, but... Uh, this is groundbreaking TV show, and I say that as a, as a true fan from season one, so that's, uh, that's what I think. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, go ahead. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, thanks for being here today. Sorry, can you just speak a little oh, bit louder? Sorry. Thank uh, you. Thanks for being here today, everybody. It's, it's great to see you. Uh, my question is a little bit off topic. It's for Eve. Um, sorry, I'll just speak a little bit. Just, just, uh, just shout into that sorry. thing. Lower. Yeah. The mask. Um, uh, Eve, you've worked with uh, on some of the Taylor Sheridan uh, shows and movies. Um, he's like one of my favorite writers, directors. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, if you can talk about any of your experiences uh, uh, on Wind River, for example. Yeah, Taylor is a he's a really interesting story and uh, an intelligent man and a wonderful director and a spectacular writer. And uh, he grew up as an actor. We were actors together, kind of breaking breaking our ground in, in LA and so he knows the whole process he knows how to speak to actors the way most directors don't because they haven't done it or struggled through it and then when you combine that into how he writes for the actors that he knows he's voicing it's just a perfect storm and then you combine um, he's got once in a generation talent really with the pen uh, he's reasonable and fun and he lets you do your stuff um, it's a joy to work with him. Wind, Wind River was great um, and uh, we, we've done a couple other pictures together, and so it's nice to be in that world, and I hope to continue doing it on Yellowstone and beyond. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys.
Thank you so much. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, I love the show. Uh, so I think one of the things that I love the most is that you see so many layers of the characters and they have obstacles to overcome, but they're not just villains. They have flaws in themselves and relationships within their family they want to overcome. So I want to know what's the favorite flaw that you think brings strength to your character? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> the favorite flaw that brings strength? Yeah, like, some, you know, that kind of describes the humanity, maybe, of the character. Um, I would say that Lois is sort of stubborn and bullheaded and uncompromising, but that's also what makes her Lois Lane. Uh, I would say trying to please everyone. I'd say that Jonathan, he has a really, he's very headstrong and he has a very, uh, young, bold heart, so to speak, and I think that he, he'll jump into any situation um, without necessarily thinking it through, which can be good, you know, I think that he's definitely a very brave character, uh, but maybe a bit naive sometimes as well. I would echo that naivete uh, about Jordan. I think sometimes he has a tendency to, you know, he has a tendency to lash out and everything. Uh, I, I think it's just from a, a place of not being mature just yet, and it'll be interesting to see how he develops over the seasons. I would say for Anderson, he, he is simultaneously his best and his most his, his best characteristic and his worst flaw is are the same, and that is his ultimate belief in what he thinks is is correct. And uh, as you progress, you'll see how that plays out. Thank you. Thank you. I think Tyler, you bring up an interesting notion of the character of Superman as in terms of an alien who's defending Earth, who's like an outsider, but then it, it, you know becomes his ultimate goal to be that defender, and almost to a fault, where it's like other things like family can sometimes fall by the wayside, where it's like, oh, I gotta go save the world again. You no, know, but meanwhile, I'm juggling all this set on on the home front. Well, it's like at the end of the day, where do you draw that line? Like, when, when is it like, well? Yes, I do need to be there, and that is not important enough for me to get there. So, like that's that's the thing from the beginning. We would always try to play with this. You know, how how do you make that decision? Um, and at the end of the day, you know, these guys have one death, and it's it's him. So uh, you got to be there. The show explores it so well. Uh, let's go take a question from this side. Go ahead. Um, this one's for Alex. I just want to say that it's been really incredible to get to see the like misfit kid be the superhero for once because. We've never really seen that, so it's been really amazing for me. Like right in the first episode of season one, I literally screamed when I saw that happen. Um, so I just want to ask you, what has it been like for you to portray that kind of character and bring a voice to a character that we've never really seen in a superhero show or movie? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your appreciation. Uh, you know, first and foremost, I suppose it was an honor. I mean. Uh, anyone that went to high school with me knew I did not have <laughs> many friends. Uh, it, it, not that I, you know, I appreciate those that I did have, but I was certainly a misfit my whole life. So uh, getting to represent us, if you will, uh, and then also having the weight of him being the super in the show, it, it's more than anything been an honor and it's been a, um, it's been a hope of mine that I do it with care and I do it well. So uh, I really appreciate your appreciation. You do it. You do it amazingly, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Go ahead on this side. I was like so lucky, and when I actually like to be honest, before you play the Louis, I I didn't like Louis the character, but you make you make me feel Louis now is powerful and a female human and authorities. Oh, I'm nervous. And my question is, I uh, wish the, your favorite character in DC Universe, like why? Or you want to play the role? I love playing Lois Lane. So as far as who I would like to play, it would be who I am playing, luckily. Um, as far as other favorite characters in the DC Universe, I would say it's a toss up between Batman and Superman. <laughs> Betsy Tullock is Batman coming 2024. Well said. All right, we've got five minutes left, so I think probably three more questions. So we'll take one over here, uh, one over here after, and then hopefully one more. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Hi. Um, 
course. Um, you guys worked with so many great directors on the show. What's it like working with Amy Jo Johnson? With Amy Jo? Yeah. I mean, were we all familiar with Power Rangers? Is that all of us? No? No, no just me. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I was a fan. Yeah. I, I was a huge Power Rangers fan when I was a kid. Uh, so that was... Uh, Morphin time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that was big. My brother and I, you know, did the whole going through the cabinets in the garage, trying to find the things we knew our parents got us as gifts, and trying to get them early, and take them out of the box when we weren't supposed to, all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, that was a really cool experience. Uh, she was great, brought really great energy to the set. And, and again, working with someone who's been on the other side of the camera is always a treat, because it's just a different dialogue that takes place there. So um, it, was, it was very cool to have her on set. Thank you so much. Uh, go ahead over here on this side. I think so. Palm Springs is one of my top, top five movies, probably. Oh, thank you. I, I thought it was a great, I mean, yeah. so many great actors with everybody putting in a great performance. Um, can you talk a little bit about filming that or maybe the wedding scenes, because it was probably very problematic. And also, one other part, sorry. Um, with all your work and your professional resume, where do you hold that movie for yourself? Um, I'd say very, very near the top of the list. I love the being, I love the fact that I'm in that movie little enough for me to say it's actually like one of my favorite movies. <laughs> if I was in it more, I, I would never be able to say that. But uh, I, I thought that very rarely do you read a script and go, wow, that's an amazing script. And if they pull this off, It'll be incredible, and then it would, in my opinion, when you see the finished product, go, it's even better than the script was. Um, usually, that doesn't happen. Usually, it's like this is amazing. You watch the movie, you're like, oh, what did what did we do? What happened? Um, so, uh, so I would say, you know, credit to everybody who works really hard in post to get that movie to what it was. Um, I just thought it was an ingenious idea. Groundhog Day is one of my favorite movies, and I just thought that this was such a refreshing, original take on that idea that had something very poignant to say in the most comical and entertaining way. I think you felt everything you would want to feel in a movie in that movie uh, when you were supposed to feel it. And I just thought, especially, no one could have known that that movie was gonna come out during a pandemic when everybody was stuck inside and feeling like you're living the same day over and over again. So um, it just was um, a, a crazy amount of coincidence that made that, I think, the perfect time for that movie to come out. Uh, and I thought that everybody who worked on it did a, a really great job. If you haven't seen it, uh, you don't have to watch anything else I do. I'm not, not going to tell you to waste your time. But, uh, yeah. but if you want to watch a great movie that has something really great to say and then makes you laugh a lot, it's a great, it's a great film. Yeah, it's seconds. streaming now, I think. I want to say on Amazon, but if you can definitely find Palm Springs. Jeff see, Bezos see, look at, we got the guy right here. I, it's, it's on my list. <laughs> okay, time for one more. And I think... Yeah. I I remember you from before. Do you have a question though? Or are you, are you going to uh, grace us with your art? Yeah, I'm going to hey, add something for this guy. Okay, he, he's got a little piece of art he's going to bring up. Uh, you come on up and then we're going to have to wrap it up. It's going to be a bit hard. Uh, this, this. Why would you like to try so many? Uh, something to uh, as a thank you for all of you guys for bringing a new iteration of Superman, especially the pilot. Come on up, yeah. Yeah. Let's hear it. Woo! Yeah, maybe just hold it up there so the cameras can get a shot, Tyler. There we go. Very cool. Is that the whole cast there? There you go. She got my hair. Good stuff. All right, let's hear it for the cast of Superman yeah. and Lewis. Tyler Hecklin, yeah. Fitzy Tolland, Thanks so much, guys. Alex Garfin, yeah. Jim Nelsons, and Ian Bowen. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you around here all weekend. Take care. Let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Give it up.